This video will cover fixed effects models and panel data. By the end of this video, you should feel comfortable identifying an appropriate panel data analysis method for a given question and data set, distinguishing between the three methods for estimating a fixed effects model, and interpreting the results of a fixed effects model. Recall the question we posed in class. What is the effect of marriage on earnings for men? The model that may help us answer this question uses log earnings as a dependent variable and a dummy variable for married as the independent variable. We estimated this model using OLS with a National Longitudinal Survey of Youth, the NLSY. Here are those results. The coefficient told us that married men earn 25% more than unmarried men. But we also raised a concern. Does it make sense to use OLS when we have a panel or longitudinal data set? Recall we, that we said we were using pooled OLS when we apply ordinary least squares while disregarding the panel nature of the data set. Let's look at a few observations in the panel data to remind ourselves of those concerns. The first individual, represented by the first nine observations, was not married at the start of the data set, but got married in 1990. The second individual, represented by the last five observations, remained unmarried for the entire time he was observed in the sample. Since our regression model compared the earnings of married men to unmarried men, it essentially compared the years of observations for which the first individual was married to the years of observations for which the first individual was not married and all of the years of observations for the second individual. Does this difference really tell us the effect of being married? We might be concerned about omitted variable bias here. What if there is something else about those observations, where the individual was married or not married, that would explain any difference in earnings? For example, do men earn more when they are married because they tend to be older, and older men tend to earn more? We could add age as a control to address this concern. Perhaps other control variables are also important. How about years of work experience, job tenure, education, or innate ability? you could likely make a long list of variables that might be omitted. Some of those omitted variables are readily available in the NLSY, while others are not. In fact, they are quite difficult to measure. Let's also make another distinction between the control variables that will become important soon. Some of those variables tend to change over time, while others do not. Education tends to be completed early in adulthood, so education might be constant after individuals reach a certain age you might argue that innate ability is also fixed. We refer to these variables as time invariant. Other variables such as age, work experience, and job tenure are clearly time dependent. Why make this distinction between time dependent and time independent variables? It turns out that if all of the relevant but unobserved variables are also time invariant, then a panel da data estimation strategy called fixed effects can help us remove the bias caused by omitted variables even if we don't have those variables to include in our model. Let's try to visualize how the fixed effects strategy compares to pooled OLS. This graph shows the hypothetical earnings of two individuals by year. Suppose that individual A is unmarried until 2005, then he is married through the end of the data set in 2010. Individual B is unmarried for the entire time shown. Although the idea is similar to the real data from the NLSY, this example is idealized to simplify the graph. Let's first think about what the pooled OLS model does. It compares the average earnings across observations of individual A when he is married to the average earnings across observations of individual A when he is unmarried and individual B for the entire time period. With no other control variables, we would simply be comparing the averages of these two groups. This difference, about $5.63 per hour, is the pooled OLS coefficient on the married variable, but as we suspected earlier, this probably does not reflect the impact of marriage on earnings. Perhaps we simply need to control for some other variable like age when using pooled OLS. If these two individuals are the same age in any given year, then holding age constant would mean that we are, for example, comparing the earnings of individual A after he is married to the earnings of individual B in the same year. The control would bring the married coefficient down to a bit under $5 per hour. 
But do we really believe that this difference is attributable to the effect of marriage? Or is there still some other control we are missing? That is, some other difference between the two individuals. We might note that the earnings of both individuals appear to be increasing at a similar rate through 2004, and if this pattern continued, we might see individual A have earnings like this. We might think of this as the individual A counterfactual, that is, how would the earnings of individual A evolve if they followed the same pattern of increase over time, but also took into account that individual A starts with significantly higher earnings than individual B, perhaps due to a difference in ability or education. In this case, we would attribute the gap between the counterfactual and actual earnings to the effect of marriage. This is exactly what the married coefficient in a fixed effects model, $1.50 per hour. The fixed effects estimator looks within individual A, noting the increase in wages over what we would have expected based on his age. This estimation me method much more plausibly identifies the effect of marriage on earnings rather than confounding the effect of marriage with other factors that tend to be associated with being married. Let's now construct a formal model for the fixed effect strategy. If we have panel data, each observation is indexed by both a unit I, which might represent an individual for example, and a time period T. The dependent variable Y might depend on a variety of independent variables and a random error term U. Revisiting an idea introduced earlier, we will then ask which of the independent variables are time invariant, that is, which variables do not change over time for a given individual or other unit. A fixed effects model removes these time invariant independent variables, replacing them with a term alpha i that represents a unique value for each individual in the unit, uh, individual or unit in the panel. This alpha i is sometimes called the fixed effect or in certain contexts, the individual effect. In our example, the effect of marriage on earnings, it would represent the effect of all characteristics of an individual that do not change over time. Note that this fixed effect includes the effect of time invariant characteristics that are difficult or impossible to measure, such as ability. We'll see shortly how capturing these otherwise unobserved effects is a great benefit of the fixed effects model. The model's time varying independent variables can stay in the model. Finally, many panel data models will also add one more term, delta t, which you could think of as a time specific intercept. In other words, it captures differences in the outcome y that vary across time periods but not across individuals. For instance, if earnings is a dependent variable, the delta t terms might capture changing macroeconomic conditions that affect overall wages. Starting with this final formal specification of a fixed effects model, we will now discuss three ways we can go about estimating the model. The first is called within groups fixed effects. To implement this method, D mean the dependent and independent variables within each unit or group, then estimate the model. Let's remind ourselves what we mean by D meaning and understand why this works. If we average each term in our model for one individual i but across all time periods, we would get this. For instance, yi bar would be the average value of the dependent variable for individual i, perhaps the average earnings across the years that an individual is surveyed. Note that the average of alpha i is itself, since this individual effect is already time invariant. Next, we will subtract the means from each value, yielding this model you can verify each term. yit minus yi bar becomes this difference. Since we are subtracting the mean, we say that this is the d mean value of y within a unit or within a group of observations represented by the same individual or other unit designated by i. We get d mean independent variables for the same reason. One important consequence of the subtraction is that the two alpha i terms cancel out leaving no fixed effects term in the equation with the d-mean variables. By eliminating the fixed effect terms, we can estimate parameters simply by using OLS. Let's visualize the within group fixed effects regression using the example of the effect of marriage on earnings. We might picture d-meaning earnings and controlling for a time trend together. For individual A, the d-mean and d-trended earnings would be the difference between earnings and this trend. So the d-mean and d-trended earnings would be slightly negative before the individual gets married, 
and slightly positive afterwards. Since the deeming earnings are higher when the individual is married, the fixed effects model would attribute that within individual increase in earnings to the effect of getting married. Note that individual B does not get married, nor do his earnings deviate from the time trend, so these observations would not affect the estimate of the effect of marriage on earnings. A second method to estimating fixed effects models is a dummy variable regression. Here we include in an OLS regression a set of dummy variables for each unit or individual with one excluded category as we have done before. The idea here is simple if you remember how dummy variables work. The alpha i term really just means that each individual or other unit in the sample is allowed to have a different intercept. We have allowed different groups to have different intercepts by adding a series of dummy variables to the model. For instance, the dummy variable i2 is equal to 1 if the observation describes individual 2 and 0 otherwise. The parameter alpha 2 describes the difference in intercepts between individual 2 and the omitted category, in this case individual 1. It may be worth noting that we can include the time trend as a separate set of dummy variables as well. Although this procedure differs from the within group fixed effects model, the mathematical result is the same. Let's return to our example. An important point here is that controlling for individual dummy variables also means that we are holding individual constant. In other words, we should be looking at the relationship between marriage and earnings one individual at a time. If we extrapolate the earnings of individual A based on the time trend, we see that a one unit increase in the married variable, that is a change from unmarried to married, is associated with this additional increase in wages. That increase would be reflected in the married coefficient. As before, individual B does not have any within individual change in marital status, so his observations do not affect the married coefficient. One final method for estimating fixed effects models is to use first differences. To implement this method, subtract from each variable its value one period earlier and estimate the model. Let's see why this works. Start by lagging the model by one period, that is, ask what this relationship would look like in time t minus 1. Next, subtract the time t minus 1 model from the time t model to get this. We see, for example, that the difference between the dependent variable and its lag becomes the new dependent variable of the first differences model. Similarly, first differences of the independent variables would become the new independent variables of the model. Similar to the within groups estimator, we see that the alpha i fixed effects cancel out. This cancellation shows that the first differences method takes into account these time invariant individual characteristics, just like the within group fixed effects and dummy variable regression methods did. However, the first differences method is not mathematically equivalent to the other two. Let's revisit our example one last time. Look at the graph of the two individuals and think about when the first difference of the independent variable, married, is non-zero. You should see only one such place, that is, a person at a point in time when the value of the married variable changes. Individual A gets married at this point in time, making the first difference of his married variable equal to 1. How much do earnings increase at this particular point relative to the increase during the times when there was no change in marital status? Compared to this baseline increase, the additional increase in earnings is this amount, which the first differences model would attribute to the effect of marriage. Although the three methods for estimating a fixed effects model involve different procedures, and the first differences method yields different results, all rely on the idea of looking at changes within an individual or other unit of the panel data. Unlike the pooled OLS regression, which attributed the difference in earnings between a married and unmarried individual to the effect of marriage, the fixed effects regression looked at changes in earnings within an individual whose marital status changed over time. In many cases, including this example, the unobserved time invariant differences between individuals are probably correlated with the independent variable of interest, in this case marriage, making fixed effects model a prudent choice.